I just have to say that I object strenuously to your use of the word hilarious. Um, to me, this feels a lot like your reaction to being named in one of these manifestos. Now, you're of course not responsible for the words of somebody writing that document. But I do think that laughing at it is a real problem because these are real families that are impacted by this violence. And I think our efforts towards talking about this have to start from a place of mutual respect, which is what I've heard from, from this side of the table. Now, the reason we don't have those numbers, I want those numbers as much as you do, but the number, to say the numbers don't show something is simply not supported by the data. Okay, and I have 38 seconds left, Ms. Mulligan, if you, can, if you want to respond within that time. The only thing I would add is that um, it's in the name. Terrorism, domestic terrorism, it terrorizes us. It terrorizes us in our homes, it terrorizes us in our schools. Um, and, the, and to the points made by, uh, by the other panelists, it is disproportionate um, to its impact on any individual life, and it's not. You reject the idea it's something that doesn't matter or doesn't really matter? Absolutely reject. Okay. All right, so here's where we are. Every, every member now has had five minutes in. Okay, and Mr. Clay, so we have two members who have not, so I'm going to go to the two members who have not yet, and, then, and, and we'll give an opportunity for a closing thought to any member who wants before we go. Am I next to respond, or is Mr. Meadows? I thought Mr. Meadows was Mr. next. Mr. Meadows, okay. Mr. Meadows is next, then Mr. Clay, then to you, Mr. Jordan. Uh, Ms. Owens, obviously this is a gang up on you. You know, we, we're, we're giving uh, these witnesses the ability to do a rebuttal on you. And so, um, you know, I... I find it unfair, Ms. Ballou. I mean, you know, candidly, for you to show mutual respect and then you to go after Ms. Owens, it's not appropriate. So, Ms. Owens, you can have four minutes and 34 seconds to respond, however you yield for a second? I'll, I'll yield to the... Thank you. Uh, I believe, Ms. Owens, when you used the word hilarious, it was, in, it was referencing the fact that no one had asked you a question. It wasn't to the subject matter of the hearing. Is that right? That is correct. And for ha to have another witness insinuate something that is not accurate is just not appropriate, Mr. Chairman, for how witnesses are supposed to behave in front of this committee. I also think you didn't say it doesn't matter about the subject matter of today's hearing. You said there are other subjects that matter as well, and maybe we should spend some time on those. Is that accurate? That is correct, and they matter much, 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 much more. And I have said that. I said that in my opening, and I will say it again you know that white supremacy and white nationalism is nowhere near, ranks nowhere near the top of the issues that are facing black America. And the reason that you are bringing them up in this room is because it is attempt to make the election all about race as the Democrats Not in do. my case, Ms. Please Owens, I'm sorry. Don't, please my, do not characterize Ms. my motive. Ms. Mr. Chairman, it's my time. Yeah, you, it's my got, time. You've got your time, Mr. Meadows. I'll Every, give you three more seconds. May, Every four years, you bring up race, and you knew exactly what I meant when I said hilarious, and you just tried to do live what the media does all the time to Republicans, to our president, and to conservatives, which you tried to manipulate what I said to fit your narrative, okay? I was not referring to the subject matter that is hilarious. I said it's hilarious that we are sitting in this room today, and I've got two doctors and a missus, and nobody can give us real numbers that we can respond to so we can assess how big of a threat this is, because you know that it is not as big of a threat as you are trying to make it out to be so that you can manipulate. And the audacity of you to bring up the Christ Church shooting manifesto and make it seem as if I laughed at people that were slaughtered by a homicidal maniac, maniac is, in my opinion, absolutely despicable. And I think that we should be above that. To try to assign reality or any meaning to a homicidal maniac writing a manifesto, which, by the way, let the record show, also stated Spyro the Dragon, the child's cartoon, as a source of inspiration. He also cited Nelson Mandela as a source of information. I don't think, I don't think that Nelson Mandela has inspired mosque shootings. You can correct me if you think I'm wrong. You, are, you would rather assign meaning to a homicidal maniac than to actually address that I said to, the things that I said today that are actually harming black America. Number one, father absence. Number two, the education system and the illiteracy rate. Illegal immigration ranks high, abortion ranks high, white supremacy and white nationalism, if I had to make a list again of 100 things, would not be on it. This hearing, in my opinion, is a farce. And it is ironic that you're sitting here and you're having three Caucasian people testify and tell you what their expertise are. Do I know what my expertise are? black in America. I've been black in America my whole life, all 30 years, and I can tell you that you guys have done the exact same thing every four years ahead of an election cycle, and it needs to stop. I'll, I'll yield back. Uh, thank you, Mr. Meadows. And 
Thank you, Chairman, for the opportunity to testify. Um, I just I want to testify just as a, a black American today, and uh, I want to first start off by saying that white supremacy is indeed real, uh, but despite the media's obsessive coverage of it, it represents an isolated, uncoordinated, and fringe occurrence uh, within America. It's a fringe occurrence that is being used, in my opinion, by Democrats to scare Americans into giving up their votes to a party that can no longer win based on simple ideas, which is why we're seeing so many of these hearings back to back, despite other threats that are facing this nation. I want to reiterate that point. White supremacy is real, just as racism is real, but neither of these ideologies are real in this room. They have become mechanisms for the left to continue to call these hearings and to distract from much bigger issues that are facing this country and which threaten minorities. Much bigger issues that they are responsible for. White nationalism sounds a lot better as a threat than father absence. When are we going to call a hearing on the 74% of single motherhood rate in black America today? My guess is probably never. Since Democrats are the author of that epidemic, which leaves us, black Americans, 20 times more likely to end up in prison, nine times more likely to drop out of high school, and five times more likely to lead a life in poverty and to commit crime. White nationalism also sounds a lot better than illiteracy rates. I'm assuming we're never gonna call a hearing on that, which is a real epidemic that is facing black Americans and minority Americans today. An epidemic which, by the way, has a lot closer of a tie to our nation's history of white supremacy. Slave codes in the early 19th century made it illegal for black Americans to learn to read. Why? Because if slaves could read, they could access information. I don't believe that much has changed. On the most recent national assessment of educational progress, just 17% of black students scored proficient in reading at a 12th grade level. 83% of blacks in America were not found proficient in reading at a 12th grade level. Are we going to have a hearing on that? Probably not. White nationalism also sounds a lot better than abortion as a threat, which has resulted in the slaughter of 18 million black Americans since 1973 and points to a bigger crisis, which is the fact that the black population growth has stagnated in this country. The crisis that in major cities like in New York, we have more black babies that are being aborted than born alive. If we're talking about preserving lives and we're talking about white supremacy, we should probably have a topic, a conversation about that. But today, in this room, we're going to see Democrats try to connect the dots to, to white supremacy and the internet. So the question is why? So that people who have absolutely nothing to do with propagating white supremacy are censored, silenced, and controlled. What they are actually after is our permission to censor and silent and control any dissenting voices that go against the mainstream narrative that they wish to propagate. To give a glimpse into just how absurd and expansive the definition of white supremacy has become, I offer to the committee that I have been libeled and smeared by Democrat media cohorts as someone who supports white supremacy. You need but look at me to determine that that just isn't true. Why? Because I routinely say, black people don't have to be Democrats. I am now considered somebody that is radicalizing people on the internet. What a radical idea black people waking up to the abuses and the Democrat Party, uh, which has been instigated upon black America over the last 60 years. There have been sincere attempts, just so everybody knows, to censor me on social media because I am radical. YouTube once censored me for criticizing Black Lives Matter. They reversed the censorship and they apologized and they called it a mistake. Facebook once censored me for calling out liberal supremacy as a threat facing black America. What I said specifically was that in any community where liberal policies reign supreme, you will find that black America is hurting. I stand by that assessment. Facebook reversed my censorship, apologized, and claimed it was a mistake. Of course, I'm fortunate that I have a big enough platform that when I get branded something extreme, I can reverse it, but the majority of Americans don't have that platform. The majority of Americans with dissenting, um, dissenting opinions are silenced forever. Many words which have once held very serious meanings have come to take on a different definition over the last couple of years as Democrats have desperately tried to grapple with the fact that they are no longer able to manipulate Americans with broad claims and broad strokes of racism, sexism, misogyny, and the like. Words like racism, which today most nearly means anything or anyone that disagrees with the liberal, and terms like white nationalism, which today and in this room and upon this floor most nearly means that it's election time, America. 
It's time for the left to do what they do best, divide, distract, and hope to keep their most important voting bloc to their party, which is black Americans, angry and emotional and reactive enough to keep voting for the same party that has systematically destroyed our families, sent our men to prison, and deferred all of our dreams. I would close out by telling you that I, this is not going to a work. Washington Could not imagine any circumstance where parents are treated, treated as domestic Additionally, terrorists. Additionally, he has held numerous the posts day before the counterterrorism division the gentleman the FBI. Out of order. If you would just yield for one sec, I would like I to respond not. to what I'm you said. I will not. I'm introducing witnesses. Our, I'll begin from the beginning.